It is Sunday, <laughs> June 18th, 2017, and school is officially in. Oh uh, no, nah, this is hilarious. So, um before we get started, happy Father's Day happy to Father's all Day. the fathers, um, to all the dudes with no children, happy future Father's Day or happy I chose not to partake in fatherhood Father's Day. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um mentor I'm somebody, you know, do something. Like, you know, grab a kid. No no you don't, don't grab a kid. <laughs> 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 Go somewhere, you know, volunteer your services. That's what I really meant. I didn't mean to grab a kid. Please do not grab <laughs> any of your child and just mentoring them. Okay. So, um, this is our latest show in the installment of the June series of the African American Music Appreciation Month. <laughs> I know. (laughs) Um, And I am in beautiful, sunny Hollywood, California right now. Um, Yes, yes. And I'm. No red or blue. No red. I did go see Compton. I saw Watts. um, Yesterday I went to go see Santa Barbara. Sorry, Santa Monica um, Pier, which is very beautiful. And today I went to go see the Black Folk. Which right. was beautiful as well in its, you know, own way. Watch was a little bit rough, just saying. <laughs> Compton has that big ass, you know, C O N P C O N P T O N sign. So did I feel it right? Yeah. Yeah. Like right in front of the train station. Apparently they're very fond of that big C O N P T O N. Putting it everywhere because it's all over the city. But um <laughs> so today we're talking about R and B or rhythm and blues and its origins no. which is a pretty extensive um extensive endeavor. So um let's get that started. Um so we're in first period. I just wanna and, say I just wanna say okay. that I don't have as deep a connection to R and B as my illustrious co host. So Oh I my god, I forgot to introduce my co host. If y'all know who we are, but that's default. Well, no, you still gotta introduce the co-host. Like, even on shows that people know who people are, you still gotta introduce the co-host. So, right, so let right, me right. let me introduce the quiet storm. That is Aaron. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. And, and um, let me introduce my other co-host. I would have to say. He's probably like a little New Jack Swingish, maybe. I could dig with that. I can I can rock with that. I can live with that. Yeah. <laughs> I think I might be a cross between brown eyes soul and like neo soul, maybe in there somewhere. Yeah. But yeah. It, it um, a little Gerald Lebertish. <laughs> <laughs> I love Gerald Lebert. He's like a, he's a giant teddy bear. It is a giant love, teddy bear. I love Gerald Lebert. Especially about Gerald Lebert. I used to that, love that one song. I share your underwear, girl. You hurt me. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> you know what? That's pretty decent for somebody who doesn't like R and B like that, though. Rest in peace, Gerald Lebert. Thank you for giving Southy. Thank you for giving Southy a shot. Oh, God, please stop. <laughs> like, it's like a running joke now. Every episode Look, turns I'm into how you, can, how you can squeeze D-Block into every freaking episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm campaigning. So, I'm campaigning. R&B, R&B actually started... Um, it didn't start as R&B. It started as race music, what people called race music. 
So, mm-hmm. Wikipedia actually says Negro spirituals. Well, really, it started with race music. Everything was called race music. It, it didn't matter what it was. Mm-hmm. Even that was called. Everything was called race music. So, Anthony has asked questions before. You guys don't know what to ask for about why I got to be black. Because everything was black. That's why. <laughs> because if you <laughs> it, shit was black and that's what they called it they called it race music because it was the music that black people made okay and it didn't matter what kind it was it might be with blues, jazz, gospel comedy records, they were all race records it was all called race music period mm-hmm. and they just threw it in one big category but this was like early in the early days like like between the 1920s and 1940s is what we're talking about here okay um, yeah. and there were only certain record com- like record companies that you would record that, that actually recorded race music so like the research gives me okay a record Emerson Records um, Vocalation Records, Victor Talking uh-huh. Machine Company, and Paramount Records. So it, it was very limited. Race music was not marketed to any white people. Well, again, like I said, with the jazz show, like a lot of the race music wasn't recorded. That was like the best stuff. Yep. It was all. But, well, that's, like that's why we. That's, yeah, but that's why we. Um, that's why we. Um, Kinda like we're talking about how like uh, jazz parallel with um, hip hop in that way because right. hip hop was kind of, mm-hmm. hip hop was basically the same way before right the exact was, same way and I was just thinking that before when I was looking up I was like this is the same way hip hop started you had yeah. this little mom and pop and that's the only people that and it wasn't marketed to white kids but as with hip hop even though it wasn't marketed to them they picked up on it. Yeah, it still got they out there. It was big in the get out there. Mm-hmm. They're going to hear it. And they then, so that's basically what started to happen. Now, early race music or like different kind of music, it was like different kind of music. Like, um, a lot of it had like a, a gospel-y, like Anthony was saying, feel to it. And it, and it was, um, especially in the early days, it was like a style. It was a, a style that was um, considered very popular called jump blues. Um, jump blues is like the predecessor to rhythm and blues. And jump blues is like the two artists people know jump blues mostly from would be Cab Calloway and Louis Jordan. I, I was going to mention that it seems like the best artists come from the church. Yep. Like Fantasia. But those example. two right there, everybody. Everybody, loved. they were very. Those two were very popular artists. Those are two of my favorite artists. Of um, Louis Jordan, I, I I like walk around singing Louis Jordan and Cab Calloway songs all the time. Nita Moocher, Beans and Cornbread, like they they made some really good music. But it was it was it was music that you would go party to. Yeah, yeah. right. But well, they were you know, listening it to was Back in the, uh, right. what they call it, the, they would call it the juke joint, right? <laughs> exactly. I don't know if you guys saw. Um, I know Aaron still hasn't, but I know it. say you saw it. That um, that part in Get On Up when James Brown and the Flames went into that club and they were singing uh-huh. that Louis George song. That's Jump Blues. So back in the day, that's what everybody did. And so. After a so while, cool. that was so cool. It was cool. It was very cool. Um, so then, what happened? Like towards the end of the quote-unquote race music period, there was a man named Jerry Wexler who helped shape the sound of like soul music, Aretha Franklin, and and he didn't like the term race music, obviously, because I mean. It's like, and we're talking about the other, other show. It's like, after a while, it starts sounding like, did you just call me a Negro? Like, you, <laughs> you just, you don't like that. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> it's a very divisive term. I mean, at first it isn't until things start to wear on and, and change and all of a sudden you don't like, he said, I didn't like the term race music, you know, because it, it felt too limiting. 
Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and again, when 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 the music started to get more popular, and it then it started to actually be um, marketed to African, like the outside African American community. You wanted a different term for it because if you call it race music, that means well, who can listen to it? But people of right. this race. That's that's what I think when I hear it. So that's what I think. You can't so market they, that after a certain time period. Uh uh-uh. uh. So so Jerry Rex, so he was like, I like the term rhythm and blues because the music has rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it has a lot of this bass in in blues like you know bluesy music. Yeah. Well, I I told you my definition of rhythm and blues. <laughs> oh, I can't. I can't do this. <laughs> now everybody with the definition of rhythm and blues is it. My my definition is like you trying to get the rhythm so you don't get the blues. Like that's what it is. <laughs> that's what it is basically. Trying to get that rhythm so you don't get the blues. What? <laughs> And that's so basically that was the around the late. To it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was about 1948, 1949. In fact, June of 1949. How ironic is that? Uh huh. June <laughs> of 1949 is basically when um, the journalist Jerry Wexler suggested to Billboard that that phrase rhythm and blues be coined and that's basically what happened after that it was rhythm and blues period and that's what it was but He's apparently a genius. well you know uh sure of sort <laughs> <laughs> if that happened then everything became rhythm and blues though unfortunately for a while. At least we started yeah. categorizing and separating everything out and then, you know, all of a sudden jazz. Now, I want to say something about this before we move on just, and we all start talking about the next level, but a lot of these genres have been named in retrospect. Okay? So, gotcha. two of the categories that that were, were already solidified were race records or race music and rhythm and blues that was created by Jerry Wexler he consciously did that the other ones people started to break and splinter off and a lot of times in retrospect they went back and named these things because they diverged too much from the original state of rhythm and blues that they mm-hmm. had to give it a different but it happened after the fact that sounds like what's going on with hip hop right now. And that's like that that was gonna be my point. So a lot of the yeah. stuff we're listening to right now that we're like, what the fuck is this? It <laughs> might get defined <laughs> ten years from now because we know what to call it. Right. Yeah, because it ain't hip hop. Or it ain't R and B. It's like what the fuck It ain't hip hop, it's something else. Yep. But are you singing? Are you rapping? Are you like else. what are you doing? I don't know. But Rhythm and Blues, um, again, it, it has a a very diverse base. It's got some jazz. Um, it's got some blues. It's got some gospel. It's got some soul. It's got a little bit of those early origins of, of rock and roll that yeah, we yeah. created, too. Um, so it has all those things. Basically, you're saying uh, like a lot of earlier um, black music didn't have a, a genre until stuff started getting put on records. Basically, I, yeah. I feel like that's when it started becoming more important to label it. Well, it it's become more important to label it because like who knows what to ask for? Like when you like, oh, I want to hear something. How do I tell somebody what I want to hear if I don't know what it is? Well, yeah, but you don't have that option if it's not being recorded. If you got to be there live. Well, I mean, we're still in the recording stages. I wonder. You know, <clears throat> Excuse me. that might yeah. happen at some point, but but uh, but we're but we're kind of still in the recording stages. 
you know, where, where yeah, we yeah. can say, hey, this is what this is, or this is kind of what, or let's kind of throw it over here until we figure it out. That's why everything keeps landing in hip hop or because those are our places to put things. And then those genres branch off from there. Right. So the early rhythm and blues records. And the case in point, that stuff now, a lot of those early records are called soul, that's called soul music. A whole different offshoot. Right. But it's been named in retrospect. Soul music got named in retrospect. It's an offshoot of rhythm and blues, but it's called that because it's the sound that used to be R&B that got old. <laughs> mm. Basically. Yeah. That's funny. That's weird. Why would they do that? Why, why not? Because now, what do you? Because when you go in and you tell somebody, "Oh, I want you to play, play," you know, play some of that those oldies. Like you guys keep saying, "What what oldies do you mean? Do you mean the oldies from ten years ago? The people calling oldies now? Right? You mean the oldies from twenty years ago?" That's why. That's why I was talking about people like Anthony uh, Hamilton earlier because, like, you know, regardless the way the way his music sounds, regardless of when he came out. Somebody will listen to that and you know, he sound he got his sound is older than yep. you know, the the time period that is um that it was conceived in. That's that's what drew me to Anthony Hamilton too, was his sound. Like he got that genuine struggle bar sound to him. Right. But you know, you know how that go though, like when somebody, you know what I'm saying, somebody our age or younger listen to that, you know what I'm saying, it's automatically old head music, regardless and of the And they can't even tell, but they can't <laughs> tell that that's actually new. Anthony Hamilton is new. Yeah. And right. they yeah. don't know that because of how he records, he's like Neo Soul, which we'll get to in a little while, mostly. But because he's Neo Soulish and and like Neo Soul has that older music sound like the soul music sound to it what we call soul now they don't they can't tell like i mean was it 10 years ago 20 years ago 30 years ago 40 years ago most right. now was how many years ago now yeah and that's definitely so the sound he, somebody yeah the sound the sound that people like um him and uh you know uh uh rafael sadiq you know use is definitely a, a testament to um an older sound yeah. Yeah. That resonates with certain people. It, right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It definitely. <laughs> but <up>. like, <laughs> they're like adult people. <laughs> 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 but um, so apparently also, um, R and B has some roots in Afro fusion rhythm. It has a lot of roots like I was saying, rock and roll, rock and roll like um. Oh my God, who was that dude who played with? Uh, Fast Domino plays the piano. A lot of that stuff was incorporated. So, Italy. so when you start moving into like the 50s and um, you're going through that rock and roll period in the 50s. So a lot of that stuff, it gets tinged with rock and roll during that time. Right, yeah. because, so everything, like, because so, everything was rock and roll. So it was yep. like, it was still, even if you was like a lane for it too. It wasn't a lane for it yet. Yeah. No, well, but, yeah, it's no, like it was still fine. Yeah, it, it had to get to the school period. Right. So, yeah, but I get what y'all saying. I get what um y'all uh-huh. saying too, because it's like um you would have like a maybe he played a jazz uh piano, maybe he was a jazz player and he played the piano, and then you know um because rock and roll was so prevalent, you know what I'm saying? Like you know he just. Yep. Ended up ended up getting lumped into that uh, category, you know what I'm saying? Right. Well, like one of the strongest pioneers for early um, R&B, rhythm and blues, was Ray Charles. So you had yeah. somebody like him. You had like a little Richard. And he, you know, he pulled heavily from the church, which is what I was saying before. Church and and rock and roll music, like they were yeah. like a, this this weird mashup of it. And in in the early <laughs> days. James Brown was too. When James Brown first came out, he wasn't doing funk yet. Him and the Flames were still doing that, like strong that like, rhythm and blues, that early rhythm and blues sound. And then, like yeah, towards, right. the, like you started moving into other people who brought in different flavors, like Nat King Cole, you know, like Della Reese. And they were still singing a version of R and B. 
you know, um, Sam Cooke and, um, oh, what's my uh, oh my God, Otis Redding and, yeah. um, oh my God, Jackie Wilson. Like, that was the R&B music-ish, like, of the 60s, and then you had Aretha Franklin. By the time you started, like, hitting the early 60s, it started to formulate. It was a right. lot more, it was, like, gelling a lot more. Then you got to, like, the mid 60s and then Motown hit. Yeah, Motown. <laughs> the whole town right there. And you seen that, you know, Motown sound developing. <laughs> if we go down and again, clapping. <laughs> <laughs> but that actually helped solidify. Motown actually, even though it was basically an assembly line for music. Yeah. <laughs> it, you know, and, and that's what um, Barry Gordy attended it to be. But I'm not like, mad at that. I'm not mad at that. I mean, I think during that time period, it's what it needed to help to gel it and define yeah. it and, and give yeah. it. Yeah, I'm not mad at. I'm not mad at the way he did it, but it's the way that it gets done now. It's a problem. But the, he, I mean, he still had the Funk Brothers. Never doesn't know who the Funk Brothers are. You yeah, all need don't know to look up the Funk Brothers. They defined the Motown sound. They were the set musicians that played on all of the Motown hits from the beginning till about the late '60s to the early '70s until Motown moved its headquarters from Detroit to Los Angeles. Okay. And the Funk Brothers are well known. Like there are people who, like, ma- who are like madly in love with the set. They-, they know who the Funk Brothers are. Like, if you ask somebody who's a real musician, I know D'Angelo loves the bass player um, um, James Jamerson. Like James Jamerson's name rings freaking bell. People know who he is. He's like legendary. One of those guys. Like, He's, he's one of those dudes. So they helped define the sound. They made the music um, famous. And a lot of people in the 60s don't know that there were a lot of set musicians that did that. Like, they were people that shaped that sound for the whole 60s. It was the same people playing on the same record. Yep. Over and over and over again. So um, after Motown, then it became a very, very distinct sound. R&B was very distinctive at that point. There was no more question about, you know, oh my God, what is this? It was like, it, it, it's that shit. What what time frame would you say that was? The 60s to the 70s. And then that's where you got all these different branch offs. Like the 60s is where you go, okay, this is jazz, this is funk, this is disco, this is like, it started to branch off. This is blue eyed soul, this is, because R&B itself was solidified. So there wasn't a whole lot of wasting back and forth about, oh, what is this? It was a very clear, more defined sound. You had different people separating different types of soul, like, you know, Motown soul from Memphis, from Chicago. So the Philadelphia sound, so like everybody started making their own different local versions of right. R&B. Right. You know, so it got, it got to be very, very, very defined. Like there wasn't a whole lot of wafing and like waffling back and forth like during that time period. People knew what to call shit then. So you're saying that um, R&B is the reason that everybody else decided that, you know, they had to define their particular sound? I would say that R&B and probably rock and roll. Mm. I was gonna ask why isn't that okay with hip hop? And you know what? That's a good question. Why is fucking isn't it? And that's why everybody keeps saying it. Because we've done this shit continuously and before yeah. redefine this shit. Stop just throwing it all in the catch all. Like, why yeah. are we in this race music phase with R and B? Fuck that shit, it's not race music. <laughs> we know it's um, a different kind of hip hop now. Like but there are some like there's crunk, there's trap. Yeah. You know, I mean, we know some things are broken down. Like, some things are, aren't the same. Like, you know, there's G-Funk. 
Yeah. Well, the, I think the issue is that people don't. There are people who are idiots to music now, <laughs> and they don't understand the different genres exist. They just start calling it something instead of understanding. People who know know what G funk is. Right. 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 Cause like, Probably. like even me being here, seeing that G Funk documentary on Friday, when people start talking about that, they were like, "Throw that G Funk." I don't want you to then go put on some trap music. A cheap music. When I ask for G Funk, your ass better have some with Nate Dog singing on it. That's like, where is I it? Think- I think a part of the problem is the people that are reporting on it either don't know or they don't care enough to research it properly. I thought you were hearing like a, a, a little boys in the hood thing. They either don't when know. We started that out. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't care about what's going on in hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> with, really? with the fucking with the, with the white socks and your Adidas with flip on. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told I look like Ice Cube. I have been told that. You don't look like Cube. <laughs> I have similar features. We have similar features. <laughs> I think you look more like um, Gerald Levert than you do. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told that, too. I've been told that, too. All I need is the curly top. <laughs> so, in the 80s is when R&B kind of got interesting. Yeah. Um, late seventies or like middle late seventies, you did, you also got some like some sort of like those weird sixties psychedelic influences that came through, and so you had psychedelic soul that also came through. But like like Stevie Wonder, he made some of that stuff. A lot of this stuff crosses over into two and three different genres because of the music. So where you might get yeah. somebody calling. Um, Parliament Funkadelic or just like Parliament special or not sorry Funkadelic especially calling them Psychedelic Soul when we call them Funk mm-hmm. yeah pretty much but that's because that's because um I think in this happens in every decade too like you still got people that's experimenting you know what I'm saying yeah um you got people experimenting um people like they try to figure out what it is and they don't know exactly what it is so you know they just make up their own little term for it or whatever, and it turn out to be something that don't even last that long. So, right, that's true too. Because if it doesn't hang around long enough, nobody is really calling it any damn thing. <laughs> right. Then they, to, then they try to apply that term to something else. That I that I should I hate there. Yeah, they want to be <laughs> it's like, more than a culture like, behind it. Yeah, like like bringing it back and call like. That's how I felt about this freaking Harlem shit and the Running Man challenge. Like, dude, right, this shit right. was something else for. Like, like, what the fuck am I looking at right now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, this is like a fucking Running Man. What is this? <laughs> but yeah, that. So in the in the eighties, you got um, and it's always been very natural for music to sort of blend with other things. So. In the 80s, you started getting all this synth pop coming yeah, through one of because the, people started. Yeah, one of those, out. I think that's, I think that's one of those experimental niches I was talking about. <laughs> well, no, um, 80s like R and B was was very heavily affected by synth pop. Like, you, like one of the yeah, it, first I know it was. was, was I know okay. it was, but what I'm saying is, like, you know, it's not one of those things that you know is like more prevalent now. Like, it's not somebody like I don't hear too many people that you know bringing that back in a major way. Like, yeah, that's, like a dirty, that's like a dirty little secret. But all they do is use um, all these electronic instruments making this R&B music now. That's all they do. That sounds it, different. Though. That's, yeah, that's not it the same thing. It does it does sound different, but it's still a bunch of electronic shit that they're making. Mm-hmm. It's not, and 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 when I hear it, cause I lived through the '80s, I'll be like, um, so and so called. Like when I first heard, um, I can't think if it was Ro James or the other dude. I was like, Lou Sands call, and they want they their fucking instruments back. Like it sounded <laughs> just like Lou Sands. 
But see, now nowadays you have somebody that instead of instead of just like you know using that particular sound, they'll sample something else that use that. They'll sample the actual song that use that yeah. sound. Like instead of instead of you know using that sound, they'll sample a high take me on. So. Oh, you mean, oh, you mean I'm um, aha? Uh-huh. Yeah. And, yeah. And then you gotta take into a, like effect too, but like. Like, like some of your really, really, really strong forerunners in the 80s, like Michael Jackson and Prince. And like Stevie, Stevie Wonder was the first one to start mass using all of these synthesizers. And then the producer that came behind him doing it, his name was Kashif. I'm sure you ever heard of Kashif before. Kashif was a, like a, a beast in the early... He's like, Kashif is like the, he's like the Teddy Riley of the early 80s. Right. Okay. He basically like redefined R and B music from that that hardcore soul type of sound, like where you know you had all those you know men groups, you know that were like moving from doo wop because doo wop was another thing that that came out in the sixties and that fell under the like R and B category, but it got categorized. It was doo wop and then it branched. You know everything kind of blended and branched. So. People incorporate the doo wop sound, but it's not called doo wop anymore. Like people will look at groups like Boys to Men and say, "Oh, that's it's like throwback doo wop ish." It is, but you know things got like watered when those genres that like Aaron was talking about when things that were a thing broke down and they weren't you know being popular. Yeah. Well, they weren't being they weren't popular. It just they, they lost popularity. Yeah. So when doo wop broke out, you know, and and it stopped being a thing, you had to go somewhere else with that because the next sound was coming. Through. You know, so you still had the sounds. They just they started they, they just kept reinventing them. So you also had in the eighties. That I don't think I don't think that like doo wop really died out though. Like you know, um, it did though because if you I listen to one of the people that would tell not, you that. Reason not reason I say that though is because like um like you can't you can't really define a lot of um a lot of the R and B that uh you know we listen to without it if you That's like true. I was watching uh, yeah like we were watching the um the uh the new edition um biopic and like what new edition comes from that uh that foundation yeah that's my point you, is that it like yeah. it like it 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 dies out in popular because when Parliament Funkadelic first started out, they were a doo wop group called the Parliament. Right. And if you sit, if you listen to George Clinton tell the story, he says when doo wop started to die out, meaning it was no longer commercially viable. Right. Right. Yeah. That's the thing. And, that's and that's what I mean. The sound didn't die out; it just redirected itself and rechanneled itself. And it flipped itself into whatever new sound you were doing. It didn't. It didn't end. But you could not go places anymore under the moniker of doo wop because it was no longer commercially viable, and it ended. That's when they went into funk music because that's that beat started becoming commercially viable. It was during a period when like the '60s were happening and popping, and everybody wanted to sound like freaking Sly and the Family Stone. Well, yeah, I feel like I feel like that same energy behind that decision is responsible for what's going on with the decline of music now. Yeah, but I mean, we we said this before. Everybody is always looking for the next new thing when you don't, when you're not vibrating at an optimum level and you're not creating right. at the highest level possible. Yeah, you need to be creating at the highest level so you don't keep. Doing this flash in the pan shit that's not gonna be here for like oh. ten seconds to play well, out. Well, are we re- are we really creating anything new? Like if that's you know what I'm saying, if, if every that, if everything right, if everything no. keeps coming, every a lot of things come back around. Like you said, like Boys the Men, you know what I'm saying? Uh, was is, are reminiscent of that doo wop sound. So like people that grew up back in the day, like the 40s and 50s, that grew up um with that type of music they like oh man like that's you know what i'm saying like that's yep. that's that's that sound we we used to love you know and that's you know what i'm saying i'm glad they bring that back 
like eventually eventually that's going to happen with hip hop like you know it's going to be that bare knuckle sound that everybody going to so feel too. like yeah that everybody going to be like oh man like this is some you know breath of fresh air shit right here <laughs> but that's what I mean like like I mean you got to hit bottom and I think I hope we're close to the bottom now I hope that that's safe to assume but you never know <laughs> but I mean I think Aaron is right because, like I was saying, like this 80s sound that you guys don't hear. But see, I hear it. I hear the Kashif sound coming through that music. I hear, like, that song. What's that song? Um, um, Can I Keep You In Mind? Whoever that dude is. That shit is straight 80s. That's an uh, 80s song. I don't know that song. I hear, like, I, 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 I hear the synth pop coming back through. I hear the... I hear the um I hear it. I just don't 80s, I hear it. I just don't I just don't hear it a lot of times in black music. No, but even with us I hear it. Like the eighties also got um hit by um new wave. So like Prince was like at the forefront of that mixing New Wave and R and B together. And so I hear that sound too, even coming through sometimes. Like that that new wave because that that synth pop sound was a was a was a watered down New wave ish sound that you that you got, but part of the issue now, Aaron, that you're hearing the problem partially is that the people who were making music in the '80s, even though they were making music with all this electronic shit, right. in the '60s and the '70s, the music was very warm. It was very organic. So, so you had right. so you had the people who were making. The, the folks who had this warm organicness that they grew up in or were already making they took that and they brought it they brought that sensibility to these electronic instruments right so it still came out with this certain sound it still had a heart it still had a heartbeat see now these kids that we're looking at they didn't grow up with that they grew up with this 90s maybe even so it was already like snatched out all of that heart and you know that heartbeat that was there is already gone yeah mm-hmm. that, that uh, 90s all about sex R&B <laughs> yeah so now the it sounds blues, like angry so now blues. it sounds like angry robot you know it doesn't yeah. sound like actual heartbeat or soul or <laughs> you know all that kind of stuff that rhythm and blues like I call it rhythm and blues so that first period. And um who got out to lunch today? I forgot. <laughs> out out to lunch was kind of controversial cuz like I wanted to talk about Tin- Tinashe. Mhm. What about her? What about her? Cuz she she's kind of like if this was the breakfast club, she'd be getting the breakfast. The don't get it, day. But at the same time, what I don't want to. I said, if this was the breakfast club, she'd be getting the don't get it, day. Every day? No, well, <laughs> during this particular <laughs> topic, yeah. As it relates to this particular topic, yeah, she would. But I don't, I'm of the mindset that I don't want to kick her while she's down. But she's like, perfect, <laughs> she's like the perfect target. I mean, Why is she the perfect target? For a couple things. One, for blaming her mediocrity on colorism. Ooh. I think that's a cop out. That's, that's, that's a straight cop out. You know. He mapped her. He's just straight mapped her. It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. She don't stand out enough to be a Beyonce or Rihanna. So for her to go on an interview and call them out as the reason why she's not like popping is like ridiculous. Well, let me play devil's advocate to that stuff. I, on a certain plane, we said this before. There, there isn't enough lanes right now. I do agree with that part. I don't know if that's the reason why she's not popping though, like this. I I feel like my reason what I get from her is like she don't stand out. She's just not. She don't got that star power. Yeah. I feel like she's a of too many different things. 
She like another face in the crowd. Anthony calls her a a, a, um, a culture or um, culture. Karen. Almost, yeah, almost. Really? Yeah, cause she picking and choosing what she want to try to pop, like whatever's whatever's hot at the moment. That's the way. Like she's she on the whole Janet Jackson thing. She's trying to Leah, like the baby Leah, oh. the baby Janet Jackson. Oh wow, I can see. I don't like them kind of artists. You just been right. like, switching your switching your switching your style up since the beginning of your career. Yeah, she that's, has. That's what, that's what I'm saying. That's vultures. I think my big issue with her is two things. One, I need her to like her oversex. I can't get with this oversex. Hi, I'm my mind. Yeah. Like high out my and somebody like criticized me when I was talking about that about I don't like this new rape culture thing where you can't call out some because I don't want to get into a space where you start victimized where where, where women lay in a victimized state. You do have control over certain things. You shouldn't be leaning every two seconds around folks you don't know. Why are you leaning? Why are you drinking lean and fucking double cups? <laughs> where somebody, where you're passed out, where somebody could just fucking rape you. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I, don't like it. I don't like it either, yeah. yeah. But she has like a bunch of vids where she looks like she's leaning that, and or perk it, perked up. Like it's just numb culture. That's the trend right now. And that's part of our vulturism. So, so okay, the trend for you to contribute to rape culture? Yeah. That's what the fuck shit is. Yeah, basically. And that one video, I think, I'm, I think it's called Party Favors. Yeah, Party Favors. The whole thing, the fucking date rape scene. Oh wow, man, she's not cool. It's a dark haze, and it looked like she's, you know, and like like the like the video comes in and out. She looks like her eyes are dilated. Seriously, the fuck. <laughs> for her to say like knowing that, like for her to say like the black community don't support me, like why should we? And you saw that video, didn't you? Didn't it look suspect? I saw that shit. That's I, I, that's just not attractive. That shit is not I, cool at all. No, no, I'm tired of that shit. I think we look her up. She, she writes her own songs, doesn't she? That's what Wikipedia said. Her team does an incredible job at Wikipedia. They got that shit down <laughs> back. Her Wikipedia page makes her sound amazing. And I don't know about that. Like, if you bring uh, your, if, I don't know, I don't know about any other artists, but <clears throat> you can you can tell artists right in your stuff, and it's switching up your style every every other album or every other performance, like for sales, for sales, yeah. Yeah, but black. I mean, she's not. She gets hits on stuff. I remember. Um, this is actually kind of horrible. Academics did a post about her one time. It was like maybe a couple of years ago. He loves where her. because these dudes are they are thirsty as fuck to stare at her and jack off to her. She not he just, right. she he not just right. academics academics just love mediocre shit. No, he actually he called her out because she was talking about she all these hits on YouTube and how she has all these um like like all these Instagram followers and how she's on social media but that shit is not translating to record sales and what he said was Tanache is too boring but he didn't say she was too boring because she was mediocre he said in order for R&B bitches excuse my French to pop you gotta have some drama and nobody checking for regular R&B chicks like that. And I hate to say that shit, but everything that's out here makes it look like it's true. Like, who's that chick that didn't pop until she tried to fucking kill herself over a fucking party yeah. next door? Yeah, that shit was ridiculous. Kalani, oh, like, Kalani. you gotta have some kind of sh- something has to be going on, some kind of fucking drama for anybody to buy your shit. So she had gone this rant about nobody buying her shit, and academics was like. Show us your pussy and go sit down somewhere. Like literally, like that's disgusting. <laughs> it is. It is. No, nah, that's the turn. That's the way. Yeah, that 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 is crazy. That is like that now, though. Like you know, 
And um, her, I think what her problem is is that you know she um, she basing her success on where she see other artists that she you know she want to be in their position like, and that's not healthy. That's not healthy as an artist. Like I don't, I don't not, feel like not, that. Not coming, not to coming keep out. The journal. She do not coming out and comparing herself to Beyonce like that's just not gonna happen. She needs night. to make a journal and she needs to write that shit down and she needs to either step that writing herself up or get a writing team or she needs okay. to know who she is first and then right let somebody know it's plenty, who she it's plenty is. Of, uh, it's plenty of other artists um that you know they don't they not uh, they not really big you know what I'm saying like like uh Frankie J. Uh, Amanda yeah. Perez, Amanda Perez, but, like you know, what I'm saying these are like no, regular, no, 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 regular um, Elvira. like you know, singers. These regular singers that no, they don't, the you know, what I'm saying? they not crying, right? No, 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 well, the because the she expects because people are saying that she is, she expects to pop because of partially based off her kind of like Maya. Yeah. She's like a new age Maya. She expects Maya to pop off her looks. She did. Not at first. See, but Maya when, even when, another one. When Maya first Maya came another... out, but she was strong out, out of the fucking gate. She did alright. She did alright. Right. No, no. All right. I, I'm telling y'all when when she came out in like ninety seven, ninety eight or whatever when she came out in the in the lip. She was perfecter. She had, but she, didn't spike. Say like she had that. a little spike. She had a little spike. Thanks to Rugrats. She had a little spike. What? Maya, <laughs> <laughs> Maya also had. Her. She had like Cisco behind her. She had. Yeah. At the fucking time, she had like a like a cute little look, and she was dancing in the video with um, what's his name? The dude. He was hot then too. Um, um, the dude. Uh, it ain't my fault. Oh, oh, she had the nah, video, <laughs> video with Sook the Shocker, you know. She also had a little booty, too. <laughs> but the, and, 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 and she had the video with Jay-Z. Like, that, that Jay-Z song pop, this is the same thing Tanashi is trying to do. Like, she got the song with Schoolboy Q. She got the song with Chris got, Brown. She, she got ain't the, got no booty. She ain't got no booty. Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> They got no booty, it's not meant to be. <laughs> Anthony got this stupid theory that who ain't got no ass at all. <laughs> Don't pop because they ain't got no ass at all. Hey, you can't tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> so far, look at the ones that flop. Look at the ones that flop. They got no booty. <laughs> That's some new, dumbass, new age shit. Because back in the day, it didn't matter what your ass looked like. Okay. <laughs> It's like um, the action. It's Evelyn Champagne King sold records just fine with the clothes on. It's popping nothing. <laughs> Patty LaBelle was out there like, you didn't have to do all that shit before to sell records. That shit is new. That's when we hit the see, fucking but, style over Patty, Patty got But that's the, that's the annoying it. part about it, though. I want to unwrap that Patty present. Patty got this new Oh, my God. You guys, Even as old as you <laughs> I want to unwrap that Patty Price. These two and they pay the bell. <laughs> they be skeeving me out, boy. Yes. If I ever what did you say, Aaron? I ever get the chance. Huh? I said, Aaron, what did you say? Aaron, you nah, said, what's talking annoying? About- yeah, I was talking about, um, I was thinking about, uh, like, we just got done talking about Maya. And um, mm-hmm. it's funny because, like, you know, that's how... Like, I believe that Maya writes her own shit before I believe that this girl do, because even Maya more, she more comfortable in her own skin. Maya just won a Grammy, by the way. Or really? some type of, yeah, some type hey, of an yeah, award for her, for her last, yeah, for her last album. And, you know what I'm saying? She's like, you know, she's doing her independent thing. You know what I'm saying? She ain't really chasing. She not really, Maya yeah, she not really chasing, album? like, the status of Beyonce, you know? Maya has an album? Yeah, yeah. she did. She got independent. I didn't, I didn't know that. Someone that who has cool out too. nowadays, and nobody knows I, what's out nowadays. Nobody, I, and that's I, my I, point. I, I'm saying Tanashi is not completely wrong. The only people's album that you know that, that are out that are women is Beyonce and Rihanna. When they yeah, drop yeah. some new shit, who else do you know that you? Because most of them fucking even um, heard of El Varner. Ain't for right. El Varner. Yes. I love yes. El Varner. But yeah. my but people like them not crying about the situation. I mean, they're probably doing it in their heads and just saying stuff like that. they know better blame, than to come blame out and actually say it. Blame, blame colorism. 
It's, but it's not really colorism, I don't think. I, I think it really is what Ann said. I think this, I think she's just, she's mad. She don't have a booty. <laughs> she doesn't have a, she's not definitive. I mean, at least Maya was definitive. Like, you know, Maya, Maya had, had a very had a definitive cake. style. Maya got a little cake. She got a little cake going on. But she, she had a definitive style. <laughs> you know, she knew okay, what she so, was. She was. Right, so how you how you explain chicks like <laughs> no, Amarie then who y'all would say is nondescript? Amory is nondescript. She's not successful as an R&B artist. She's not. She, she also, had one song that popped. She also has no cakes. <laughs> would you stop that? <laughs> Amory got no cakes. <laughs> but dudes None. will forgive a chick with a face, and she's pretty. <laughs> She has a nice face. She's very pretty. She is very pretty. I like that John one thing. I like one thing. I like That's the one thing that. anybody knows her for is one thing. Exactly. Exactly. That's what That's, that's all one. y'all know her for. She got some <laughs> right songs. Other, I know uh, other songs I know her, that she has, I know her, but I know I think she's definitely Mab. I'm sorry, Aaron. She is yeah. really, really warmed over. Like I hear her and I'm like, what am I supposed to be latching on to here? I feel like I'm um, Yeah, yeah. I feel so, I, I just I feel so much lukewarmness coming from her. I guess what am I actually to be music? in love with her too? Huh? Hey Marie, hey Marie, that's weird. That's unusual. He kept telling me how he had visions of. Okay, that's probably inappropriate. <laughs> but how, how, he had, how he had visions of the two of us singing and dancing and like frolicking around in fields full of flowers and stuff. And I just took fields. I took fields full of flowers. That's a PG version. Yeah, I took. I I, kind of took that to me like, you know, some like heavily induced porn shit. Probably not really filled the flowers at all. (laughs) But I mean, she's not even. She's like, oh, she's cute and keep it moving. She's not like, oh my god, have you seen Anne Marie lately? Yeah, Yeah, she's not. She's like, okay, she's cute. Yeah, she's cute. But like, uh, what about Cassie? Same difference. Same thing. Same thing. Racially ambiguous chick. Looking chick. What has she done that we just really was wow by? What has uh, she done for us lately? Yeah, basically. <laughs> Besides, she, you know, be, Cassie have a booty? Be, a, be a concubine for someone whose name I'm not going to say because he got too many button pushes last week. <laughs> <laughs> But wait, does Cassie have a booty? I'm about to Google her. No, I don't know. She ain't got no booty. You know, I don't like this no theory you keep coming up I'm with. I'm telling you. Like, I don't it's like It's true. The, 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 I lean for this that you come up with. You this, from the, this from the same dude that said Beyonce <laughs> butt look weird. No, not Beyonce, uh, but Nikki, Nikki's butt look weird. I'm sorry, you mean, you mean Solange? You said Solange? Solange, Solange don't got no booty neither. Um. Well, but but Solange is fire. Solange is very talented. I'm surprised it took me this long to catch on. Tell me why Solange ain't popping like she because she's not mad. So why she's not popping? You wanna know why? You wanna know why? She's skinny. (laughs) She's a skinny sister. She ain't got no booty. (laughs) Cass ain't got no butt. I'm looking at her. She ain't got no butt. Nope. I can't. <laughs> like, I'm more and more, more and more. I'm trying to think. Your theory cool. might actually have some <laughs> to this fucking hypothesis. I hate this to say this shit. It's true. <laughs> I hate to say it, but it might be true. I don't even want to, like, seriously, man. She's she long back. She long back in it. Long back in it. Whoa. Yeah, she mad. She can't sing either, though. <laughs> Her voice, her voice don't stand out either though. Oh, Cassie? Is, uh, yeah. Yeah, she can. Her voice don't stand out. She, like, she should she be back on stand out, period. Besides be being racially ambiguous, that's all she really has going for her. Yeah, she looks like one of them Kardashians. She really does. No, <laughs> she looks a little bit, a little bit more ethnic than they do to me. She's like a well, you know, they trying to look ethnic. You see Kim? You see Kim? 
They talk about Kim with the black titties. Having, having <laughs> ethnic or, or have ethnic dick up inside you does not fucking count. Oh. Kim was doing the blackface thing and getting away with it. That was bananas. Yeah, that's crazy. That's why would you think that's a good idea? Stop it. <laughs> yeah, um, but um, but that um, um, <laughs> yo, I still I say no. that Tanasha needs to just needs to go to Starbucks and just grab a latte and sit in the corner and just write some journals out <laughs> every day. Write a journal. <laughs> I don't know. She needs she need something more than that. She needs like need the cutty. She needs relatable stories. Really? She got no flavor. I'm telling you, she unseasoned chicken breast. <laughs> she, that's her in the in a nutshell. She unseasoned chicken breast. Yeah, nothing, to be real. Yeah. nothing. Nothing to set her. Nothing to set her apart from anybody else. Um, not on the ground. Her ass up. She ain't herself. What ass? She ain't got no booty. <laughs> no, I mean, but like, if you watch one of them videos, I said, it's like a little Baywatch inspired she's trying, video. She's trying, she's she's trying, trying that shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what? So what happens next in the in the in the R and B segment in the R and B world is basically my is like one of my eras when I started coming up, um, eighties gave way to what was called New Jack Swing, which this is probably what you guys remember with um and that that was not named in retrospect. That was I, what it honestly, was called at the time. I can't think of anything negative to say about New Jack Swing. Some people hate it. I loved it. <laughs> I did too, but I, now I loved it. It, it's like a big ass dispute about who invented New Jack Swing. Everybody of uh-huh. course pins it on Teddy Riley. Yeah. Um, but Timmy Gatlin, who used to be in Guy, and Teddy Riley was one third of the musical group Guy, and Timmy Gatlin used to be in the group. And then Timmy Gatlin was like, I ain't messing with um, Gene Griffin and his Stephen S, and he left. But if you let Timmy Gatlin tell it, he invented New Jack Swing. If you let Aaron, because everybody else says Aaron. Sorry, sorry. T- Teddy Riley invented it. Aaron Hall says he invented New Jack Swing. Nah, uh, Aaron Hall full of shit. <laughs> but no, but people don't realize, Aaron, that Aaron Hall actually also played instruments and the keyboard. He I didn't actually know that the yeah. He, he, he played a lot of that stuff. This kind of shit gets lost and it kind of gets hard. I will say that Teddy Riley. You don't get by. Don't get by me. I listen to all that shit. And he still well, I'm saying I, I think Teddy I, I Riley is the I, one that gets it pinned on because he was the most prolific. From my understanding, as somebody on the outside looking in, like I always assume Teddy Riley was the one responsible for it. Everybody does, but I don't. I can't say that that's true or not. That he's the most prolific, and I will say that he definitely was. Yeah. Um, New Jack, by the way, is like a. It's like a a fusion genre um spearheaded as they say by Teddy Riley and Bernard Bell and it, it it was popular in the late 80s when I was a teenager into the early 90s and it it's, it has the first influences well not the first some imps, like the, the hip hop influences and the sampling and the dance music and it, it had like an urban contemporary R&B-ish sound and, you know, I mean, that's why I it like had it. Dr- drum machines and samples, like the same thing you would hear in hip hop. So it was like the early hip hop soul. But the difference is, and this is funny that um, Chuck D was talking about this documentary. The thing that separates it is the beats per minute, the BPM. Uh-huh. Like New Jack Swing was way up there. The BPMs are really high, but the hip hop at the time had high ass BPMs because New York hip hop has these really high ass BPMs. When G Funk got their hands on that music and slowed it down because they thought it had funking, the BPMs dropped, and then you got hip hop soul. 
hip hop soul was was basically the same thing, kind of sort of, but it, you, you dropped your beats per minute down to like, like once like two 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 like two two like well, you know, much I, lower. I always I always thought that New Jack Swing got his um um some of his influence from that uh that 40s and 50s uh, uh club music, and that's why they call it, it you know did. New Jack Swing. It did, but it it it. it took a lot of things from hip hop like a lot of them yeah of course so it does have some jazz you know and swing elements to it too but it 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 mirrored the hip hop of that day cause it was influenced by that and it was much, like way much more up tempo yeah. but um it was cool I love New Jack Swing it was, it was, I was pretty fine with Beautiful that. time. And so the artists, I remember at the time when it first started popping, you had to have certain albums. And the albums you had to have were I'll Be Sure, Bobby yeah. Brown, right. New Edition, yeah. Keith See, Sweat. See, but this is, thing. this is the thing. You naming all those people right now, and like when you, like people that know who, who uh, were like responsible for the production behind that stuff, like Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, and, yep. um, uh, what's the guy from Cameo? Oh, yeah, you're talking about um, Larry Blackman. Yeah, the guy that did, um, uh, I think they did uh, Bobby Brown stuff. Yeah. Yeah, like, when I think about those producers, I like to, you know what I'm saying, I, I kind of pinpoint them for the sound, more so than Teddy Riley. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's a, there's a, a bunch of different people that... Because, I mean, I'll be sure was doing yeah. his own music at the time. I'll be sure produced his own New Jack Queen. That's not that's not popular belief, though. Most folks don't know that. That's my point. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's you not know. Popular, popular belief is Teddy Riley is. Everybody... And, and that, see, that's my issue, my problem with stuff like that, because... Then Teddy Riley gets to pinned on him. He's the only person that was involved in that genre. Is Timmy Gatlin left them and he was still producing. He produced a large chunk of BBD's album of of Bell Biv Duvall. He was still producing people. Timmy Gatlin. Right. He he stayed behind the scenes after that. He didn't, you know, he didn't produce anymore. It, um, I'm back sorry, when he didn't, he didn't, he didn't knew how to do that. So. Right. They stayed, they stayed and like played the back. Yeah, basically. But um, once New Jack Swing is, was because the same thing that happened, well, like do while we were talking, New Jack Swing had a had a expiration. Yeah. You know, it came and then it phased out. And as soon as it phased out, then you get. I don't like the term contemporary R and B because contemporary R and B only means what's it basically means whatever is popular. It's, it's like pop R and B. It's like whatever is popular at that time. It tells you nothing about what the music is about. Yeah, that's true. So then Hip Hop Soul comes through. It is my 100%. This is my theory, y'all. And I'm going to tell y'all what my theory is. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, in the 80s, you didn't just sit around talking about sex and R&B songs in a certain context. Mm. Right. You had to be talking about making... Like, you didn't have too many discussions in R&B songs about just fucking people things out what you do now. Like, you had to either talk up in the confines of a relationship or you had to mask that shit. Like, really veil it. I you thought about just, that before, too. Yeah. And it's then... Way, way different. And then, all of a sudden, I am out. Because cause what you have with New Jack Swing is you got the advent, okay, we're going to start borrowing from hip-hop a little. And all of a sudden, you're borrowing from it a little bit more. And then Spend the Night comes out, a song by Guy. And Teddy and them literally say, okay, Spend the Night, please don't be... That song about straight sex. That shit hadn't happened before unless you were one or two people. Rick James or Prince. Yeah. Because nobody <laughs> else get away with that shit. And so now all of a sudden, a group comes out and is like, um, you know what? I want to do nasty with you. Like, what? What? Huh? It's almost like the lingo has changed. 
No, but they literally came out and said, I want to have no frills, unattached. I like the way you look. I like your ass. Let's fuck. Like, Man. that hadn't really been done well, before that. I see. Well, let's get butt naked and fuck. Right. <laughs> well, that's, that, go, that, go back, that go back to what we talk about um, all the time. Like, this bleed, this uh, uh, cross-pollination of rapping uh, R&B. But see, once it's been, Aaron, then the next thing you know, like a couple of I think they were testing the war, war kind of like in a couple of years B B came out and then the floodgates just opened after BBD yeah. came out and literally like they cut out the fucking middleman BBD Belvive DeVoe said fuck it we ain't gonna kind of be hip hop we going to the fucking hip hop producers they got the bomb squad <laughs> right <laughs> they brought in Heath and and, and um Sorry, Hank and Keith Shockley and was like, we gonna be straight. They met, they're the one that blended that genre. They're basically the predecessors of of hip hop, so and most folks don't even think about it like that, but they are. They said low pro ho on a record, and me and the crew used to do her on a on a R and B record. Yeah, that's groundbreaking. <laughs> nobody had done that crazy shit like nobody. Yeah. And then after that, Excellent. it was over. Everybody was doing it. But then, like, the next, like, mm, two or three years, you know, SWV, the Jodeces, the R. Kelly's, you remind me of my Jeep. Uh, you know, I like, yeah. the cr- I like the crotch on you. R. R. Kelly <laughs> has a song on 12 Play called I Like the Crotch on You. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> The it, don't more, it don't get more straightforward than that. So, I mean, the floodgates opened after that. Then it was like, well, what the fuck? So now you jump ahead to the shit we have now because you suck the love out of everything. Even in the 90s, we still had some love songs, though. Okay, we didn't just abandon love, but, uh, like, unfortunately, your generation just picked up on all these damn sex songs, so that's all you got now. Yeah, yeah, but that's that, that's that, yeah, that's that dangerous incorporation of rap music. Like I was in an interview with um Bell Biv DeVoe after the um new edition um biopic and he was talking about how, you know, they, they was kinda, you know, uh mad because they didn't name their album The Chronic. Dre named it his album The Chronic first and they was like, Damn, we should have named our album The Chronic. Like, why are you sitting there thinking of ways to, you know what I'm saying, like incorporate this this because people narrative. don't understand how they ruined it. They don't understand. And unfortunately, this shit is, again, this is art imitating life, Aaron. Like, there's no more love in our community the way there used to be. Because there ain't no love say, music. I was going to say the same thing. I was going to say the same thing. Like, that shit is, is fucked generally, up. Generally, generally upon. That shit is fucked Like, you can love your woman. You can't get no real rhythm you can't get no hugs and kisses because that shit is all punk shit now you know unfortunately um so well what happened what did what did kind of cause the counterbalance of hip-hop soul and hip-hop soul i would say jodeci was at the forefront of the movement like they really pioneered most of that like a like a them and like R. Kelly, they really hard, like heavy hitting with that new Jack Swing. So was, excuse me, that hip hop soul genre. Like they were probably the best ones that did it. But um, Neo Soul came out, kind of tried to, and Neo Soul was like Neo Soul was needed. Yeah. Because when you, because when you had hip hop come out, that counterbalance, like, 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 what happened if you like the old soul sound from the set, like the, you know, like the old con- contemporary R and B that was out in like the seventies and eighties, you didn't have anywhere to go really. It was all this very um, um, sophomoric. And I hate to say that about it, but I mean, it was. It wasn't very mature. 
that 90s. I mean, I like the crotch on you. How fucking mature is that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I mean, if you wanted something, you know, more substantial, then all of a sudden, you know, the counterbalance. And that's my thing about what's going on now. If we had, I wouldn't be angry if we had the counterbalance. So you think we don't have any of that now? Well, the the neo soul is not being pushed as much as the other shit, so that we can have the counter. Yeah, but like I said, that's what that's what people. Erica, Lauren Hill, Maxwell came out and and balanced that shit the fuck out. Yeah, but that's what you know. Younger, I feel like I feel like those artists also back in the day they had a younger audience too. They didn't just have um the older audience. Whereas nowadays, like I said, if you're doing a song like you know what uh what Maxwell is doing or what uh you know um whoever whoever you know um is out right now that's um gravitating to that type of sound, you could they consider. It's considered old head music. You know what I'm saying? Like only old people listen to. But my problem with that, it. I think, is is that all this new jack stuff that not not new jack, all this um this new hip hop soul that's out that's being tinged by everything else, by like like mostly trap. Because the, the new hip hop soul is just hip hop mixed with trap music, a lot of it. But yeah. that's what that's the that's the hip hop because the R and B or hip hop soul is going to be tinged by whichever hip-hop is popping at the time because like when I was teaching y'all that shit was crunk so you had a mixture of like all of that Usher shit that was popping with crunk right yeah mixed with you know R&B so it just depends on what's happening at the time but it's not really old head shit you just you, like Ro James again it's not like that he's a new version of that shit but he's but it's still not popping enough you still have new people coming out making new neo soul stuff that's that they're you know experimenting and stuff like um i'm not gonna say his name because we'll talk about him later but hmm. why is that shit not like that should be popping heavier but the yeah. problem is i think it's just that because we sucked all the love out of everything nobody knows how to understand or react to music that talks about love they're not raised that way. It's not. It's not in their capacity. The one thing I saw is when everybody like went crazy over Miguel um, Adorn. Like I was like, really? Oh shit! <laughs> that's a fucking love song. Like that's that's a yeah. love love. Song. Yeah, it really is. So I was trying to figure out why can't so that popped it I mean it was huge. Why can't we get more of that to pop? Mm, because it's not it's not done in the it's not done in the same way. I don't know. That's unfortunate me. I but okay. So we talked before and here's all the question, Aaron. Because we're talking before, there's other genres. There's British soul, there's brown eyed soul, there's blue eyed soul. Right. So, British soul is just that. British soul is like um, soul music from folks that, that come from Britain or like the the, um, the UK or England. Mm-hmm. And that kind of crosses over with blue eyed soul too, like, you know, certain artists like, um, like Van Morrison and. Um, Joe Crocker. Well, he's not. He's he's not British, but um, oh my God, who's other? Oh, Josh Stone. Yeah. And your girl Adele. So Adele's music will pop though, and she's considered British blue eyed soul. No oh, man, we really gonna go into this territory with all that's about? Why not? Why not? Because <laughs> <laughs> like this, I don't know. This is, like my least favorite conversation, and y'all already know. I know. It's a thing. It's a thing. Yeah, it is a thing, but it's annoying that it got to be that way. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Rihanna got to get on the screen, take off her clothes, 
and incorporate her, you know what I'm saying, school yep. cool R and B R and B music with all this other bullshit that ain't got nothing to do with R and B. But True. Adele Adele don't have to do that. Justin Timberlake don't have to do that. Robin Thicke don't have to do that. So you know what I'm saying? Like that that it pisses me off. Well, um uh, my mom takes her clothes off though. But see now your is always half naked. Like like back in the day you would see her. She always taking her clothes off. Yeah, but even she, even her she, stuff she even her stuff naked. is yeah, but even her stuff is more substantial than what you hear from a lot of, you know, <laughs> our artists. You know what I'm saying? Oh no, Black she artists. she yeah yeah she definitely would be singing now, yeah. right? You know. And I don't I don't I don't like the playing field when I look at it that way. Oh well, um, Brown Eyes Soul for those who don't know that is um, Blue Eyes Soul is is obviously like you know Hall and Oates and. It's it, you know, Phil Collins is like, you know, white people that that do soul music or that are tinged with soul and soul music. And brown eyed soul is actually those people who are Latin, Latina, Latino and of like um more um Hispanic, like people who are brown people who are who, who do soul music. So, so was Selena? I mean, so was Selena count? Um, no, cause she was she did a uh, more um that was at Tayano. Yeah. yeah. Like Mexican stuff, but somebody like Jennifer Lopez is considered brown eyed. Oh, uh, I I guess Whitaker. <laughs> <laughs> they call it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. Like, you know. Um, and who's the other one that that's Latina? The the one that is like all the rage right now, her. Ariana Grande. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. her. I can see that. I don't see I don't know if I call her brown eyes soul either though. Come on now. Man. You know who sound more hey. more like you know who sound more like soul to me? Um and I don't even I don't even know what ethnicity she is. Hold on. Um, Alyssa Carr. Who? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. The one, Actually, the one that sing, she sing that, uh, uh, what's that called? Um, that I'll Be Over Here song. Yeah. So, I, I guess, I guess Selena is, is, is kind of, is kind of, you know. Yeah, I don't know what kinda, she, she from, she from Canada though. <laughs> it's kind of in there. Um, here's something that's weird. They call Sheila E. Brown eyes so like really? Really? Uh, I don't know about it. Uh, yeah, not? Sheila but Sheila E because Sheila E has Sheila E's borderline black. Yeah. I think she actually has some Afro Latina um in her. I don't know if I would just call her brown eye soul like that. This whole brown, this whole brown eye soul like thing is kind of new to me. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, right? Yeah. What about uh, Lisa? Lisa from uh, uh, coaching? Yeah. See, they see they would call the that, you know they were like, oh, okay, she's brown eye soul. I don't look right. at her like that. Like some people with Latina, I don't really look at like. Yeah, me neither. Some people get a pass. Like Tina Marie, who's not brown eyed soul, who people would think would be blue eyed So I mean, Tina Marie, she, she, she had a very black heart. She never, she's not <laughs> one. She's blacker than Tanache. Like what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> when did when did Tina Marie ever have like sing like on purpose sing pop hits? Right. Yeah. Her shit was all R and B ish always. Yeah. And her stuff was her stuff was more jazzy or like for people that's not familiar with her more B side stuff like her stuff was I like yeah. the way like Tina Marie incorporated the jazz sound to her stuff. Tina Marie is like my favorite. She's my favorite female R and B artist and she's white. <laughs> yeah, I think she probably. Yeah, I think she definitely probably in my top five. It hey, was well, color a prerequisite for this genre. I don't think so. I don't think so either. You just gotta be decent. You gotta be good. Like, I'm just like, you can't be white and whack. 
Kenny <laughs> <laughs> White and Wack. <laughs> right. I think struggle. you know. I mean, she's definitely <laughs> she's definitely case in point that you can come in this genre and just destroy that shit. Like, there aren't a lot of you know black singers that are rivaling Tina Marie. Uh, she was just good though. She was good at it. She did her fucking thing. Like, yeah. you know, I was cry. I, I cried when she died. Rest in Me peace, too. Tina. That was really upset. She used to be in Philly all the fucking time. Yeah, yeah. I went to um, one of them shows. I saw her like every time she came to Philly before she died. I remember a year that she passed away. I was like, oh, Tina gonna be back next year. It was like, Tina Marie has passed away. I was like, no! She was was pretty young, wasn't she? She was. It was like the fucking ugliest cry possible, too. Yeah, she was like 50 something. I think it was um, prescription pills or something. I want to say. Mm. That got her. Yeah, I think so. But yeah, I'm. So how how would you how would you describe blue eyed soul? How would you describe blue eyed rat? I don't care about blue eyed rat really. How do you describe it? Uh oh. uh -oh. What What do you call it? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't even know. Is that a thing? Like, is that really a thing, though? Apparently, it is. <laughs> I mean, if, I, I mean, if blue eyes soul is a thing, right? Right. right. What's the no. See, no. See, that's where. See, this is back. I, you, <laughs> just go back to the conversation we was having. You know what I'm saying? Like, it depends on the era. Like, like, like we just got done talking about how, you know, we sit here and like Adele is obviously. Um, a Beyonce's contemporary, um, but like you know, like this is it's the same thing that's going on in rap. Like you know, what I'm saying in comparison to what you know those white artists are doing, you know, what I'm saying we look goofy as shit. Well, I mean, like how does that? But, how does but that affect your opinion about somebody that's good that's white? Huh? How does that affect your opinion about somebody that's good that's you mean like Eminem? Because, or like, because, maybe because, like, a lot of, maybe. because a lot of times, what that means is that a lot of times, all it takes is for, you know, somebody to be white and mediocre to, to you know what I'm saying, to seem like they're that much great. Like, <sighs> if they're mediocre, if they're mediocre, you know what I'm saying, you can't, like, somebody like, all right, Eminem, for example, like, what about Eminem? Take it back, take it back, Mark and Mark and the Funky Bunch. <laughs> why, why, nah, I'm why? Good. Why? Yeah, Why? But even then, all right, if you want to, like, if you want to really go back, then, and if you really want to go back, why don't you pick like, um, like go back to like third base or something? Pick third base. Well, he, no, third but no, he got a point though. Like, even I'm, a, I'm a, I could use somebody like Marky Mark because, like, if no, you, if, if no, seriously, <laughs> like, if you was if you was to put Marky Mark against anybody, you know, that oh we God. look at and it's like this is a fucking joke right now. Marky Mark looked like the greatest thing ever compared to a little Uzi. Like, that's yeah. the type of shit that's, that's, the type of shit that's that, going on now. That that is actually actually <laughs> accurate. But I mean, the same could be said this point for like Vanilla Ice. Vanilla Ice is better than Lil Uzi. See, that's what. See, but that's what I'm we're like dealing with. That's what we're. Yeah, but that's what we're dealing with now. And like, well, you, you know, know what I'm saying? Aaron, like, okay. So my point about how hip hop affected R and B, which basically it ripped it fucking apart, but and it took all the love out of it, which is why we have the shitty, shitty ass loveless conditions that we have right now that are fucked up. But. R&B affected hip hop as well, especially during like the early part. Yeah, it was, it was definitely reciprocal. Like, I mean, it, it was like a time when like you had people like like Wu Tang, like the first Jizza album. Jizza is like in a pair of silk pajamas talking about "Girl, Come Do Me." Like, I mean, everybody <laughs> had like when you came out, you had to look and sound like. like um, like Father MC and shit, cause that that's what was popping. Like this weird, you know, New Jackie R and B type of, you know, like Did that's you say what. Father MC? Yeah, Father yeah. MC was huge. You know, <laughs> he was at one point. Man, I've heard that nigga. That's how Mary J. Clive got popping. 
haven't heard that name in years. <laughs> That's Mary J. Blige guy from Pop was singing. And fucking Jodeci. Casey and JoJo was singing on Freedom Night, they wanna be. <laughs> <laughs> like that gap was out at the time and it was popular. That, that, you know? shit, that shit was too much, too much. And I think it's the same thing, like like what you're just talking about. It's like sometimes it just it boils down to a bunch of dumbass popular stuff. Not saying Father MC was horrible, he wasn't bad, but he wasn't no Big Daddy Kane or anything. That's true. Yeah. Nah. You know, I mean, it's like we're, I think we're in this a really, really weird ass spot. Like, weird. I mean, like a spiral. We coming back around to disco. I think. Oh my God! Please no. <laughs> I mean, I love to go to first time, but I don't. Uh uh-uh. uh. Not again. I don't want to do that again. If they can revisit that shit and make speaking it better. Of, speaking, of, uh-huh. speaking of disco, does uh does the Bee Gees count as blue eyes? So? Kind of, sort of, yeah. 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 I mean, if if like if like the do if the if the Wild Cherry dude and Casey and the Sunshine Band count as like Blue Eyed Soul, then yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. You know? But it's like a lot, like it's like a, a weird line, like like a fucking borderline where people go, I don't know if that's it or if it's not, but like certain songs will be Blue Eyed Soul, but then I, like, like, okay, for right. instance, you might have a somebody doing like Pat LaBelle when New Jack's um, swing was popping. She may have done a New Jack Swing song, but she wasn't a New Jack Swing artist. Right. You know what I mean? Because yeah. mm-hmm. that sound yeah. was popping, so it was like... But I feel bad for these people that do traditional, like, more R&B-ish now, because it's like, what the fuck do you do? Like, Remember that, that whole backlash that, um... Um... What's the name got? Because he made that song about how these, um these new artists that talk about sex so horribly it was like a little joke song but everybody was mad it was um, Brian McKnight remember that song he did yeah he was going through a midlife crisis no he was just calling that shit out he was on a midlife crisis I don't think so Ooh, I think Brian he McKnight? was calling out how yeah. ridiculous that shit was he made a a dirty sex song cause it was like I can't even write he, love songs anymore and they had that shit set he made a couple of them songs his fans were like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> well, but he said he said he made them as, like, jokes, like, spoofs, because he was like, this is what is out here, and he's like, people like me, artists like me, we can't make the music that we make. Yeah, because nobody really, well, that's not what the audience is checking for. I mean, every once in a while, you get a song like Tyrese and that um that song that he came out with just recently that became really really big the one about breaking furniture no I think he said um that it was a song about him being ashamed Uh, a song about him being ashamed or something what dumb shit I be doing dumb shit (laughs) no not dumb shit the other one I like I like the album like a like a like a like a gospel I have to listen to it again. I want to listen to it with um Taraji in the video. It's Taraji. I don't always the watch these videos. Yeah. Okay. It might be. I listen to the album. Song, album. I think. Yeah, he's I don't. Like, he's a shit. I don't listen to a lot of Tyrese though. I like Tyrese. I don't either yeah. because Tyrese is dumb shit, but. <laughs> He makes good music. <laughs> um, it's not always good either, but some of it's good. Yeah, some of it. But 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 that's that that song got big. It got really big. Yeah, like it was all it. over the place. It's like a single almost. I mean, I was actually surprised that that song popped so hard because there's so many of them that just don't anymore. Johnny Gill's um had a song with New Edition that, and that one popped too. That one kind of yeah. got big. Johnny Gill had a uh, a song that was a hit recently though. Uh, that song was recent. I can't... Huh? Um, the one with him and he was recent. Oh, I don't. Yeah, I don't know if I know that one. It was like, it was like maybe two some... years ago. 
a year ago. Yeah, I think it, like okay, yeah, yeah, we might be talking about the same thing because I heard something from him recently. I was like, I probably I might check that out. Yeah, it was, a, but you know what, Aaron? To your credit, it had a throwback sound to it. Oh yeah. Right. So it happens mm-hmm. when they got that throw when they got that throwback sound. It's just old head music. It don't matter if it's new or not. <laughs> yeah, cause like it was, it sounded almost like a like a stepper's cut. <clears throat> right. That you would step to. Yeah, Babyface had one of, did one of them too. Recently. Yeah. yeah. Um, return Return of the uh, Tender Lover. I ain't know nothing about that. I liked his album. That that's, that that's album. Cause you, yeah, that's because you don't listen to R and B. Right. You know what though? That joint with him and Tony Braxton was popping. That um yeah, I like duet that. I, like that I love too. that. I listen to R and B. Yeah, that joint was crazy. Whatever. The dream does not count. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, actually, the dream does count. I just I don't check for that kind of shit. I don't like the LOL smiley face. I don't like dream either. Of the world. I don't like dream. I'm not. I mean, I'm not. I ain't going to I gave the boy. I gave. I gave the boy a hard time when he first came out, but he got some songs I'll listen to. I will say. I will say. I find myself singing makeup bag more than I should. Yeah, I'm good. I ain't. What, caught, I ain't what is that? I ain't what is that? To <laughs> In real life situations. Like, did you grab your bag? Your makeup bag. Your makeup bag. What the fuck is that? <laughs> right. I found myself in the makeup bag more than I said. I think makeup bag a lot. Like, what is LOL Smiley Face? What is that shit? People like. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. People, yeah. but the, them girls that like quote unquote R&B, they love, they love fucking Trey Songs. Trey Songs is a pervert. <laughs> oh my god. Allegedly. See, but that's why. Whoa, see, but that's why. That? See, but that's, that's why. That's why, why people. He that's why people like Trey Songz. That's why people like Trey Songz. And Usher don't count to me though. I mean, I like Usher. Usher, I like. No. I See, like. They, all right. Usher was better back in the day. They he don't. Was. He was better back in the day. But like you know, like generally, like you know, as far as like R and B, they don't really count to me because they not. They still they are not really, unfortunately R and B. Yeah, but they don't really count because somebody that listen to Trey songs and listen to Usher, you know what I'm saying? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, if somebody, you know what I'm saying, somebody knew was to come out and like, you know, um, and try to and try to bring back that old throwback sound of R and B that we talking about, they'd be mm-hmm. like, oh, well, that's some that's some old shit, and I'm gonna go listen to some, you know, <laughs> contemporary. <laughs> Contemporary. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever the hell Trey songs or dreams well, doing right that, now. Like that, that, that shit is. That's that fucking hip hop soul of now is what it is. It's just you know Trey songs and Usher. That's their format. They make R and B tinge with hip hop. It's what they do. Like, like like we're talking about what is what is Swizza, what is Miguel. Like they do some weird ass pop tinge shit. But again, let's go further back. What was Michael Jackson? Yeah. Right. Yeah. He's like he's the one that he's the one that fucking started that shit. Trey, Trey Song trying to be R. Kelly. All oh, right. Well, he needs to stop because that ain't working. See, but this, this is the thing. This is the thing, and this is what's okay. Wrong. Like, this you is how you. That now I get LOL smiley face. I was, I <laughs> See, but this is this is the thing, and this is the <laughs> issue with the this is the issue with the era we living in, like. Back in the day when New Jack Swing was popping or, you know, whatever, like, 80s R&B was hot. Like, mm-hmm. the Whispers didn't come... The, I don't think I don't think the Whispers um, made their songs and people no. were just like... Yeah, the Whispers made songs and people were just like, oh, well, that's not R&B. That's some old head shit. They didn't. Exactly. See, but that's where we at now where it's like, you but know... But part of the issue is, is that we worship you in a way that we did not in previous generations. We weren't just yeah. worshipping at the feet of, of being young. And that that's what shit has become now. But we all know where that comes from. It's fucking hip hop. Hip hop has done that. Because right. you introduce hip hop to the genre that was grown and you made that shit a child. Just like hip hop. So now the R and B is in the same situation where the hip hop is at, and nobody wants to fucking grow up and be an adult. 
Yeah. It's just, you know, it, right. it's a problem. Yeah, you were able, a yeah right. You were able to have, you were able to have both in the same, in the same yep. timeline. You you were able to have, it was like, yep. all right, this you is You had this your fucking, time. um, yep, right. yep. You, and now, you, and now when you I, had your I don't know, like and then you had to fucking, your, um, your, your fucking, you know, um, Luther Anita Vandross Baker. and your Anita Baker. Right, yeah. Do that but now it, just, like, it got to be you know, lumped up in the same thing for it to be yep. considered. Mm-hmm. That's a problem. A big-ass problem. For real, for real. So, unfortunately, that is the end of third period. That was some good shit today, you guys. <laughs> that was some good shit. But R&B is a hard... That's a hard topic. It That's is. a hard one. It's not a it's not a hard topic. People just need to get the fuck right. It covers a lot. <laughs> but no, it just said that and I get it now. You just said it. <laughs> like Trey Song told me R. Kelly, okay, I get LL Smart Hitches, I like to crash on you. I get it. I understand. <laughs> 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 I, I was like, what the fuck is this LL Smart? Hitch? Oh crud. Now I understand. Or oh feeling God. on your booty. I got it. I got it. Okay. Uh, so, Faith on ain't nothing but baby R. Kelly. He's baby R. Kelly. He is baby R. Kelly. So, um, and who do we have for recess today? Well, recess was an interesting topic this week. I told y'all I wanted to talk about, like, Jeremiah. Mm. I kind of... Why? We, why? Ooh. I feel like he's sincere. Cause, uh, uh. because, 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 yeah, because me and the, now today you guys are gonna see us dispute recess like we do <laughs> fucking <laughs> like yeah. we do um out, out to lunch and we go back and forth because me and Aaron want something that's more like soulful and less LOL smiley face. But at the same time, like even though he's in that LOL smiley face vein, I feel like he's genuine about it. I don't care how genuine you are about LOL. Look, R. Kelly was very <laughs> genuine about putting on your fucking booty too, but that and shit is just fucking out the door. Like what? R. Kelly, R. Kelly is a legend. A legend who may fill on your boo hoo 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 tea. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Right, so what songs? Really what songs? What songs? Pray tell have Jeremiah done to make you feel like exactly? I wasn't. I wasn't focused so much on songs, but like the way, like his career. But you should be. The way, the way his career is shaping out, because uh, he's one of those people that's like heavy behind the scenes. He gets a lot of respect from a lot of different artists and whatnot. And that's because they need him. In, they need him in the middle of their rap songs. That's why. Well, still, right. even still, no matter what they need him <laughs> for, he still, he still get that level of respect from everybody. He just, he just behind the scenes, Drake. I'm <laughs> telling you, you'll be very hard pressed to find somebody that has something bad to say about Jeremiah. Well, okay. Even though he's he's very well liked, doesn't necessarily totally mean that he's making that music that's going to propel the genre for. That's what I'm kind of looking at here. I vote for BJ, the Chicago kid. Yeah, BJ, uh, yeah. The I, like, Chicago I, like kid. I like that nomination, but my problem with BJ is. I only know him from features. Okay, we well, sent his that's album what to you that's today. What on this so you gotta, right? You gotta like him on church. I don't, I don't see any promotion or hear anything from DJ the Chicago Kid. Like you I just found out today. A lot of people. I just found out today he had more than one album. I only, thought, I only knew about the one. He has like an EP ish. Album like the the first album he has an album and then he has the the second one that he has out. But that and the first that John is fire though. It's, it's good. The the first time I heard him was on the Add To you know, on the BJ mm-hmm. BJ Chicago Kid. First time I heard him was on not Add To but a, um a actual proof John you know, actual proof mm-hmm. mixtape a couple years ago. But I haven't heard like he was coming out with a project or he had any big collaborations or he had any good singles. Since see, but if he see, but if he was a rapper, you would have just looked him up, right? <laughs> Maybe. Uh-huh. Even yeah, right, right, like, yeah, right. I, stumbled, I stumbled across. I stumbled across those things with the rappers that I listen to, like the underground rappers. Like I just come across their their releases and their news and. Stuff and see, what you guys it. are hearing right now is the fact that Anthony does not check. <laughs> 
or R and B music. I don't have that. I don't have a connection. I'm sorry. I go. I go on Google Music a playlist when I need some R and B, and that's you. That's why you need to listen to me and Aaron, DJ <laughs> the Chicago Kid. You know, yeah. I'm open. Baby, right. baby D'Angelo, ladies and gentlemen. Baby D'Angelo. <laughs> there are right. there are instruments. You can hear acoustic instruments being played on some of his songs. Well, well, there's a case to be made for Jeremiah too. Oh, God. He, he, definitely... he, he sounds like the dream. He sounds like the dream to me, like like a fucking baby dream. I'm and what is a baby dream but a baby R. Kelly? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, look, look, this kid is the future. He's the future oh of r and He's the future what? of R&B in the mainstream. Oh my God. Mainstream Help, R&B. Baron. Help. He, you can't deny that. He's the future of mainstream I need R&B. somebody to bring you back. Clear? Losing him? <laughs> really though. Put me wrong. Put me wrong. Who else leading the forefront? Oh God. Look, the forefront fucking sucks. We all know that. It's, it's it all does shitty. suck. It does suck, but at that sucky That's forefront, not saying much. Like, it's not it saying much. Like Jeremiah. <laughs> I need us to, to to go back to the to the jam era and people. like like drop that shit back. Look, should it be racist again? Fuck that shit. Bring it back to rice music. Maybe we should get somewhere. Let's <laughs> get some, some Negro spirituals going. Let's get some Negro. Well, yeah. like Chance the Rapper and BJ Chicago Kid, that's what they do. Their shit is very heavily gospel y influenced. Like a, a whole like, lot of gospel. I feel like there's a lane now for J.I.V. because we need like a new Lost Poets. Like we need like a new Kill Scott Harris. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that yeah. at all. I ain't me neither. We need more B J Chicago kids, and le- I don't think we need more Jer- like Jeremiah type dudes that get on records and make these songs about bedding you down. But see, like he's not the worst of the bunch. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's well, a lot worse than what Jeremiah. Like I don't think we want Mav. We want somebody to. It ain't Mav necessarily. I heard Jeremiah, that stuff that, that I played, I, that shit wasn't turning me on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's there's, him? There's a lot worse. There's a lot worse than Jeremiah out there. All right, so I'm looking I'm looking up Jeremiah, and the last song um, is uh, We, that you and I, John. And I, I, I actually know this song. Um, I didn't know that was him. See, that's what I'm talking about. Like He, got, he has a very familiar voice. He sounds like a whole What's lot wrong, of people. What's wrong, What's wrong? He's not like a whole lot of other people. <laughs> like, all right, I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I like this particular song. I didn't know it was him until I just looked it up. But um, uh-huh. it is definitely not no future, no R and B. I like, I don't see that at all. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's the future of the genre. You gotta, you gotta admit, no, like, oh who else God. is there? Everybody disregard what's happening right now. Okay. Who else is there? You who else is there? Anthony. You can't, we can't let somebody who doesn't give a shit about R&B tell us who the future R&B is going to be. And that's you. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's like, well, that's like, that's like, that's like, that's like Vlad, that's like Vlad telling you that Vlad is not a rapper. Doesn't that, doesn't that validate my opinion because I'm on the outside no. of and this is what I no. see? No, no. You it, sure? It like the main, that's opinion. the way the, that's the way the mainstream works. Like the mainstream It invalidates your opinion. Presents. No. The mainstream goes on what they're presenting, and like that's what I see. I don't see nobody else making waves. Nobody. If you moving. hadn't said no, Roe James is the one that made the biggest splash in the I last don't know so couple many of years. No, Roe James. I know everybody tells him that song was fucking everywhere. Speaking of like which, Prince. what do we call? What the fuck do we call like the weekend? Where do we put the weekend? I don't know. He is now that you now that you mention him, he is one of those artists that um uh I I um hear that eighties synth pop uh sound from them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Him, that nigga Miguel. Dis- that nigga disco. That nigga disco. <laughs> but but it's because these dudes like Chris Brown is the same thing. Chris Brown jumps around. He makes poppy shit. He makes R and B yeah. shit. 
like in like um like hip hop soul shit. He makes EDM inspired shit. So you got we can't like throwing EDM shit in his song. So yeah, that shit sounds dancey. But then listen to Jeremiah. It's like straight. How do you keep going back to that shit? He not straight R and B. It's like it's like straight R and B. Hip hop soul. How is he R and B? He the closest to R and B that we got. How? What, are, are you serious? crazy? <laughs> that I know <laughs> of. Oh, that I know of. Exactly, but how much do you know about R and B? Not a lot. Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. I will admit. We that. threw all these names after you. Were like, huh? I'm like but Eric I'm Robertson. You, you're you like, huh? No, I knew Eric Robertson once you mentioned the the Tigolo connection. I remember that. I listened to that okay. album. All but right. like I'm telling you, you'd be hard pressed to find somebody like, that has any like, negative like to say about Jeremiah. Like, um, like, like, okay, like. I don't okay, like, like her face, yo. <laughs> Did you just say you don't like Janelle on that face? I don't like her face. She's like cold and emotionless. She's like a fucking Terminator. I ain't gonna front. She kind of oh scared me God. too. I like, I love, I love her music. I ain't gonna lie. She kind of scared Did me. Did you see? Did you see? Uh, what's that movie really? Called? Did you see that movie? What's that movie called? About NASA and shit. Oh yeah, hit, um, hit a, figures. Hit a figures. Hit figures. She was cold and emotionless in that joke. I might have to concur with that. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, like, no. Janelle Monae kind of scary. I love her though. I love Terminator, her. Terminator, Terminator two. <laughs> so, so wait a minute. Before we get too far, before we get too far gone, let me let me give out the homework for next week. So, um, next. Next show is the last show in the African American Music Appreciation Month show. Deep, deep breath, deep breath. <laughs> and we're going to be reading Charlamagne God's book, Black Privilege, and Angie Martinez's book. Um, what's it called? My Voice. It's My Voice, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I actually have them both on on like on um audio with them oh, actually athletes, narrating yeah. them so i'm i'm done with both of them uh, i'm reading so i'm reading you guys Martinez. Do the i'm okay. reading Angie martinez now i'm halfway through charlamagne and john yeah I'm, so I'm anybody listening. wants to do that homework that's what it is and um and understand there's going to be spoilers in that because we are going to be talking about them so if you haven't read them yet <laughs> And you want to read them before the show or whatever, then do that. And if you you might want to wait until after you read the book if you're going to read and listen to the show next week. Because we're going to be spoiler alert, spoiler alert right now. I'm not going to say that shit next week. <laughs> we just going to start right. talking. Cool. That right, reminds back me. Back to, to Aunt thinking Jeremiah is running hip hop. This is the most ludicrous it's thing not, I've ever fucking heard. He, no, he's not. He's not necessarily running hip hop, but I think he's the future of hip hop. I mean, so he's. A, I'm sorry, excuse me. He's the future of R and B. Excuse me. He's back he's it up. the wave of the future of the he's purest the form of the future. The, he's the wave of the future. Did you say the purest uh, form of something? The closest thing to the purest form. You that we said got. the pure. No. Be the closest thing to the purest throne that we got. Being a Chicago so, kid makes 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 music that's inspired by gospel. That's where the so shit comes where from. Is he? Where, where what is do you he? mean? Where is he? People know who he is. Where is he? I only He's know popular. from features. I only know him from features. I just told you his thought. You need to watch more videos. He's always on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This how you see this that this that uh this that bias this that uh I don't like R and B bias stuff. It's not that I don't wait like it. Aaron, it's we not that I don't. Um, it is. To the, to it is. Okay. Let, me you, let me tell you. Yeah. Let me tell you why it's biased because <laughs> now now <laughs> we talking about a genre. Real. We talking about a genre he don't listen to. Now he want to incorporate yep. with the main with the mainstream approves of. But when we talk and about hip hop, no, no. what? See, see the thing you are so thing about Jeremiah. Wait a minute. He's not. He's not like. I got he's not like back. super. He's not super popular in the mainstream. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. That is correct, better? Aaron. You feel better, you feel better now. <laughs> yeah. Jeremiah not super popular in the mainstream. He's well respected. <laughs> he's well respected, <laughs> but he ain't super popular. <laughs> like he's, no. He's the closest, he's the closest thing we got. He's the closest thing we got. Okay, one more for you. Just one more. <laughs> that is incorrect. <laughs> All right, now prove me, prove me wrong. Who's who doing better than Jeremiah? Nobody has he to told prove you. That shit is ridiculous. BJ, BJ, BJ Chicago kid. Nobody He's knows the who he is. Of it. 
stuff for yesterday. See, why we got, nobody, know, nobody, nobody, nobody know who Ed 2 is, so why we got to talk about him? Because he's dope. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about, right? The only reason I know, you know the only reason no, I know who he is is because of Ed 2. Huh? Look. That's the only thing. <laughs> It's a lot of people don't know who Ed is, is about, but he still, he still deserves recess because people don't know who he is. That's the point of recess is <laughs> making somebody who is excellent be well known by us shouting them out. Hence, yeah, my whole, DJ my the whole, Chicago Kid, not Jeremiah. My whole point is I feel like there's a misconception about him that we need to reevaluate. What is the misconception? The misconception is that he's corny or he whack or he, he's like bubblegum. He's damaging to the culture. And no, I, I don't like, think I don't. I didn't say that. I didn't. Say he's that. just it's he's not, just standard to me. I feel right. like that's not the case. He's not. Hey, yeah. He isn't a standout. He's not doing anything that's that that's that's making me look at him and go. Oh yeah, that's that's something I really need to be checking for. Yeah. It's not anything different. It's, but a, you know. apparently, apparently, some people think he's the future. Whitaker. He the future. He the future. The genre. The Whitaker of Forest. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do this with you. And like I'm serious. You get, For real. I'm getting a shirt, a shirt with Whitaker on it, so I can flash that. They gotta take a picture of it and show it to you. You gotta be like Forrest Whitaker from from that uh, Idi Amin movie. <laughs> That's the best Whitaker ever, right there. <laughs> Cause that shit was scary. <laughs> he be giving you mad side eye in that one. Yeah, he do. That's some crazy shit right there. I don't know. You know what? I am pressed to think that you make dick decisions when <laughs> well, talking well, about R&B. R&B music. I think so. <laughs> well, I mean, I only listen to R&B besides certain people that I like. In the process of having intercourse, so that may play a factor. Hello, why do you think I just said that? <laughs> so everybody yeah. doesn't know what that is. Dick decisions are decisions that men make with their penises <laughs> that are completely illogical and are based only in sperm and ego decisions. Oh, I mean. The problem is you gotta go a little further back too. Like you gotta go back to Gladys Knight and you know. But I'm talking about people that's relevant now. Out of the people that's relevant mm-hmm. now, besides like the Beyonces and the Rihannas, there's nobody. But I'm out saying, there I'm saying for you to, I'm, I'm saying for you to have a certain perspective on it, you gotta go back a little further than like. I you know agree with saying? Aaron. Like, I agree. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're like, like, what's your earliest member memory listening to an R&B record? Being a kid with my parents playing whatever they was playing. What song? Well, that, like, I mean, uh, that's cool. Sweet love instantly comes to mind. Huh? Shout out, sweet love instantly comes okay. to mind. Okay. Um, I know it goes back further than that, but that's the first song that comes to mind. I mean, Sade is. I, that she Sade makes makes that genre that they call Quiet Storm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Kind of sort of, and, and Quiet Storm is a whole. It's like a like a lay that you play when you with your significant other um, type of uh, music. Yeah, it was I don't know. People say, that, uh, people say that her music kind of depressing though. <laughs> Sometimes it's a little dry. It's a little of like that that quiet that quiet storm it's genre. Cool. I don't know if this it's is right but we got like a minute. It's still our deal. We got like a minute left y'all. I know. But um, I'm going to say it because we get the air. I'm sorry, Anthony, but <laughs> that idea is covered in sperm, and I'm gonna call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to dive deeper into this. <laughs> and this everybody, before we get cut off, that's the that's the fucking show. This shit was way deep today. I don't even know what else to say. <laughs> School is officially out. <laughs> We're going, to, we're going to have to continue this on social media. Oh, I wanted to two, say two on recess. Shout out to uh, Camille in Columbus. She's an up-and-coming R&B performer. She got good songs and good music. And she's also very active in the community. Is that coming in like, firm, too? Or is that good? 
I, I don't want to say she's covered nah. in fur because she's pregnant. No, nah, not her, yeah. but I'm saying it's that decision to cover the fur. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> I can't. Mom, she's cool though. She's good. I like I like her music. I really do like her music. I tried to defend it. Yeah, yeah. Camille, Camille is cool. Camille is cool. We could have actually used. We could have actually talked to Byron for recess though. <laughs> I can't do this with you today, Anthony. That's funny. <laughs> I can't. This is ridiculous. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> I knew it was gonna be an Anthony show out <laughs> shit today because his ass is just really, really nuts with this R and B shit. Smile, just... I want to smile. <laughs> 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 